this very well may be my last vlog. Seriously. Is this my last vlog? I'm thinking about it. It's quite possible that I'm going to stop vlogging. And then I think, no, you're not, Sue. You love what you do. You are a cancer specialist and you love to help people. And that is the reason I'm making this vlog, but I'm really fed up. I'm really tired. I'm really tired of the criticism. I'm tired of the negativity. And I wanna tell you what's on my mind this time. I'm usually very restrained. I usually stick to the cancer and stick to the facts and why I'm here and helping you, but I'm gonna let some things off my chest. All right, who am I? I'm Dr. Sue Edinger. I am a board certified oncologist. I'm also known as Dr. Sue Cancer Vet, and that's probably why you're watching this channel, maybe. What does that mean? I went to undergrad, and then I did four years of vet school, and I graduated and became a doctor of veterinary medicine. And I could have gone into private practice, but I chose to do an internship, and that was an internship in general medicine and surgery. So another year of training, and I did that at the Animal Medical Center in New York City. And decided to then devote my career to oncology and I couldn't be happier doing what I'm doing. Helping pet owners, helping pets through, you know, a horrible time in a family's life when they're, you know, find out that crushing diagnosis that their pet has cancer. I'm really glad that I'm doing what I'm doing. So after my internship, I did two years of um, fellowships and things like that and then matched to become a um, medical oncology, did, did my residency back at the Animal Medical Center. So lots of years of training, four years of college, four years of vet school, internship, residency, and two years of fellowship in between. Then I passed boards, two sets of boards um, to become a board certified oncologist. So um, lots of training. I love what I do. And I've been an oncologist in practice now for 20 plus years, lots of years of experience. So I think that makes me pretty qualified to hop on here and share my thoughts on cancer with you all. But why do I do what I do? So I co-wrote a book with a vet school classmate of mine, The Dog Cancer Survival Guide, about nine years ago. And then I got into social media and I found that YouTube videos were such a good way to provide information. And then you could go back and easily find the videos. You know, it's where people go for information after Google. They go to YouTube and I wanted to provide information. But I'm providing this information in my spare time. I do social media in my spare time. After work, you know, I am a mom. I have a family. I have work, I lecture, I have many, many jobs, and I do all of this social media in my spare time. It's hard to do and it's hard to balance and work-life balance is something I'm constantly struggling on. It, social media bleeds into the after hours, bleeds into the weekend, lecturing, everything. It is really, really hard to do what I'm doing. Do I want you to feel bad for me? No. But when I get comments from people that I'm in it for the money and that I'm doing it to be famous, it is not. I do it because I love what I do and I love the messages that I get from people that I know that I'm helping in different parts of the country, different parts of the world that maybe wouldn't have gone and seen a cancer specialist, they wouldn't have got the information. I love that I am helping people and that's what gets me up and that's what gets me excited. And I love to think of new ways to present information to make it memorable and helpful and inspiring. And that's what I love what I do. So that's what I'm doing. But when people tell me that I'm in it for the money or that I'm doing it to be famous, you to be honest, because that's not what I'm doing it. I'm doing this in my spare time to help people. And if you don't believe me, I honestly don't care. Go to another channel, but don't watch my information and then criticize me that you don't like the information or I'm not valuable to you or that I'm not, you know, experienced enough for you because it really is hurtful and it's the least thing from the truth. I'll tell you a story. In the beginning with Facebook, I remember I was just getting going with Facebook and I woke up one morning and there were some messages that had been blocked. And the first one that had not been blocked from was a, wo a woman who had asked me a question about her cat with mammary cancer, with breast cancer. And the first message came in on my wall about 2 a.m. And since I did not reply within two hours, she went really hateful and started calling me the B word and all this other stuff that I didn't care. Luckily, she had used curse words and I say luckily because the Facebook filter had caught it. And 
it was really hurtful. And I just couldn't believe that I hadn't replied within two hours and someone went so hateful that I wasn't providing them free information and that went to the, you know, you don't care about me and my cat thing. But it was sort of this, you know, introduction into that people can be really hurtful. And I always try to say, well, I don't know what's going on in their world and they're worried about their pets, but hey, you don't have to be mean to me. I have some things going on in my own life right now, some really major changes, and maybe that's made me a little bit sensitive, and maybe that's the reason I'm thinking of taking a break or stopping for a while, but some people have said, why are you smiling in a cancer video? Don't you know how serious this is? Seriously? Do I not know how serious this is? I have dedicated my life to learning and treating cancer and pets and you wanna tell me, do I know how serious this is? Why do I smile? I smile because I love what I do. I love to teach, I love to educate, I love to help. Recently, someone's comment on my euthanasia video, again, that's where I got one of the ones about like, how dare you smiling? Don't you know how serious this is? I shot it on location when I was with my colleague and my good friend, Dr. Mary Gardner. We had the fortunate opportunity to be speaking in St. Martin. And I said, hey, Mary, why we're together? You're an expert on euthanasia. Can we talk about it? You have so many good quality of life tips, better than I do. I want to I want to get this information and I want to share it with people that help. So we shot it on location. And in the beginning, we're close friends. We bantered a little. We talked about it. And someone's like, I don't want to hear about where you are in this beautiful location. And they, I don't even think they got to the great tips that Mary had. I understand understand you're hurting. But again, the video was really, really valuable. And then recently, someone on that same euthanasia video went into, and I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but they called me a mother F a piece of F that murdering piece of doctor who tells pet owners to murder their pet. That's what it is. It's murder. And they went on a whole long thing about how I was a piece of and that I murder animals. And listen, we can agree to disagree, but you don't need to go on and on and on and be hateful and mean and tell me that I'm going to go to hell and die, you know, a torturous death because you don't agree with euthanasia and pets. Not necessary. Again, if you don't like my information, please go to another channel, you know, but let's agree to disagree and let's be respectful and be kind. Before I do a video, I just don't turn on, you know, the camera and start recording. I do my homework. I open up my textbooks. I do a literature search. I make sure the information is current and reliable. Even with 20 plus years and all those years of education, I want to make sure you have the most reliable, accurate information. So yeah, it pisses me off when other people get online and don't give you accurate information and then you believe it over an expert like me or my other colleagues who are giving you reliable information. And again, I'm doing this for free in my spare time. And I always do think it's best to go see a specialist in person or talk to your veterinarian. And when I do, topics that aren't my area of expertise. Like when I did something on COVID, I did webinars. I listened to the infectious experts. I did my homework and because I want to make sure I'm giving you the most reliable information. One video, people always ask me, what should I feed my pet? What do you feed a pet with cancer? What's the best food? And I'm so afraid to touch that subject. It's a hot topic, right? Raw foods, home cooked foods. It's like politics, you know, it's such a crazy topic. I know that video will be really popular. I have some opinions about it, but I want it to be the most accurate information. And I know some people are gonna attack me. I did this post or I did this with uh, some colleagues of mine on Instagram. We talked about how quality food from reliable pet food companies that's balanced is gonna be really, really safe. Am I against home cooked foods? Absolutely not. Many of my clients do home cooked diets and we talk to a nutritionist and make sure that it has all the nutrition needs, especially if they have other pre-existing medical conditions, kidney disease, liver disease, and things like that. So I am not against home cooked diets. I am very open-minded. But then to be told that I was part of a smear campaign against pet owners, are you kidding me? And that we, me and my colleagues, were bullying pet owners, are you kidding me? And then that there was like an anti-bullying sign in the beginning of his video, are you kidding me? I am so pissed. I am so tired, guys. I'm so tired. So, enough already.
And for those of you that give me positive feedback, I appreciate you and thank you. I need to get rid of that negativity and focus on the positive. I will probably be making more videos because helping people is in my soul. It really, really is. I'm here to serve you. So let me know what videos, if I haven't done it yet, because I need to do more homework and it takes time and I want to deliver accurate information. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you at the next video, whenever that may be. Take care and be kind. Be kind.